So now that 30 seconds have passed, or in theory you would have thought 30 seconds would have passed, what you do is again. So now we're at 55 again. So almost a minute has passed. So what you do is you crank it up. And by the way, when I say crank it up, I mean up to medium. So again, we are not trying to scorch this coffee. This thing is very delicate. It'll change color right before your eyes. And before you know it, you don't even have a full row. So we're just doing 30 seconds from the 55 to the 25. And then also very important is you have to... Now, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing my, my second roast. Uh, two, two roasts at a time. So I am uh, two pans at a time. So look, that's been 30 seconds. We now have this on low. And you don't want to forget to stir it. Because, again, the pan is very hot. Because you had it on hot mode for a hot minute or 30 seconds to be more accurate. So you don't want to forget to stir. But now what I'm going to try is for this one, we're also going to increase it to medium high. Well, high being medium since we're never ever going to scorch this. Well, actually, the point of this is actually to wait for this one to finish. So maybe we don't have to scorch this at all or like play with the temperature. I thought 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there. We would have enjoyed it. But, uh, okay, now this one flew away, so you can just grab it and throw it back. And now we're past the 55 mark. So it's been more than 30 seconds that we've been away from the other one. So now we're on the 15 mark, and we're going to go on medium. And... We're going to absorb... I feel a little unevenness is coming, which I'm not happy about. And there's going to be some un unevenness, but also at the beginning of this batch, there was a lot of unevenness, so I had to go upstairs and get the watch. So you want to make sure you have all your equipment before you even turn on the, the stove. I have to get the mode to get this going. I feel like too much is gone. Okay, now I'm going to turn this off. So if you do notice any scorches, right, the ironic thing is that, like I said, you're just using a 6-inch pan. costs about 7 bucks. Plus tax, plus shipping, whatever. Um, if you're just using this to start out, and don't forget to stir this. Then don't forget that you have a. You can always scale up, and the point is you have to develop a clientele. And that's the good thing, right? Because like a lot of businesses or anything you start out in, there's a, like a high startup cost. But literally, if it's a eight dollar pan and a seventy dollar pan, if you this is called scaling up. Where I come from, right? Like this is me scaling up my coffee production, trying to do it in the same amount of time. So when the beans are brand new, they're green. I'm sure, like anyone who's watching this would see. On every other YouTube channel, that they're that they're green, and then when you dry them, they become yellow. So I hope this should make it really clear. They're like a green, pale kind of thing. And right now, this has been roasting for a little minute, so it's starting to get a little bit pale. But you want something golden, blonde, brown like that. So. It's very important to um, stir and um, keep stirring because you see all the professionals, right? And we're distinctly not professional over here. We're just amateur home roasters who are trying to achieve a good product at a good price. And you know, that's the thing though. They say you're not supposed to bake the beans. So in theory, I should only be doing this 50 grams at a time, which is down here. And not even making that other thing. But I'm just trying to get my weekly batch going, you know. Because I don't want to be doing this every single day. It takes me like almost an hour and a half to make a cup of coffee this way. Because, okay, I drink 30 grams, but I make 50. Just because I want to be able to add up to the next day and everything. But I'll be getting some inconsistency. And I just want to see if it tastes good. And, you know, look, some of these have chips in them. And... Some of these have a little discolorations, and I'm wondering if that's adding to the flavor. This is the first time I bought this. It's Primo's Coffee, 
And I bought them directly from the thing, from the website, instead of buying it on Amazon. It's about 20 bucks for 3 pounds of green beans. And... Like I said, you want to get the inner rim, the outer rim, and you want to mix them all up and down. Also, right, so because you don't want to... The idea is to treat each and every bean equally. And the more golden brown you get it, the better. And so, like, for example, so this is what I feel. I feel it was a little bit spotty at the beginning. I thought some beans were too differently colored. And, you know, the camera will never get all the nuance that's coming out over here. So I thought some beans were too discolored and like they were too burned on one side and just because we kept stirring in a good way they evened out and again the, it might be a bad thing because i'm baking the beans you're not supposed to bake these beans i think they've already been on the thing for at least what is this time or say like now 15 minutes you know so actually it's good we passed the 15 minute mark because this is when they're supposed to start going brown and so brown is when we want to get to Again, my heat pumping method, which is medium, and we did it on the O'Clock now, so we just gotta look for the O30. And so, it's good to have a chronograph watch, and I recently got this automatic one. So, I mean, it's actually quartz, but it's run by solar energy, so I don't have to worry about the battery for as much about, I'm just trying to use a chronograph without it trying to get a new battery in. I don't think I, I, I wanted to buy an automatic chronograph just yet. So anyway, you know, instead of buying an automatic chronograph, I bought a solar quartz with the same principle. I shouldn't have to worry about the battery. Okay, I think it's been more than 30 seconds, so let me turn it down. And again, good stirring is the idea. And so we're not on a professional roaster. You know, we're not in a wind turbine or fluid thing. You know, it's called a fluid bed type thing. It's like the air keeps it moving. People have all kinds of vacuums and hoovers and heaters and contraptions and, and blow dryers hooked up in their house to like get all this going. And my thing is, well, can I do it for $7? And can we teach an average person? So now that I've walked you kind of through the roast and I'm showing you green to dark green to light to pale to roasted. Now that I'm trying to show you that. Um, this is the 30 second kind of thing over here. Hopefully I won't lose track. So. Okay, we're at the 45 mark. So. My thing is, because the cost of this business, right, which is coffee roasting, are so low, $7 pan, and if you really want to go pro, you can buy a nice $67 one. And I like these because, unlike the nonstick, they don't impart a nasty flavor onto your food. They're designed for roasting, like with cast iron. It, it The heat is so much, the radial heat, that it go, cooks through your food. You know, like a piece of toast or something. Think of it that way, rather than just like burning, or like just heating one edge of the side. And so I was at the old clock, right? So, and so, um, you know, cast iron is designed for cooking, like in that sense. Like, I'm cooking you with all the metal. And so, whereas surface skillets, like not for nothing, this stainless steel or this copper, or more, more accurately, the non-stick they all impart a certain taste to your food which i really dislike and that's why even when i brew i use glass i use metal i really don't want plastic touching my food and or my coffee at any point and you know the aeropress is kind of like that too it's like although i will concede the other day yesterday i accidentally made a coffee now i was worried that these beans were bad because like i said some of them had chips and some of them had a funny color and I'm going to see if it's still going on or whether it was the way I was brewing it. And I don't want to hear that I'm over extracting it, but maybe I over extracted it. But I really don't think I did because Matt Perger says you can only over extract if you boil it for more than two minutes. So 
We don't really have to worry about over extracting. We just got to get that coffee fine. And so, um, what I'm about to do is try to bring this up to medium roast and then put in the next batch. But I was saying something else. So, I feel like whenever it comes to poor people, and you know, you know, we have all these urban social justice movements, but poor black, brown communities and Latino, Latina communities, I feel like coffee is a great way that we can, roasting coffee and getting it to the upper class, let's say, is a great way to kind of redistribute the wealth back to the people. Because it involves a certain skill, and it still involves supply and demand. Like, if we can fund our revolution with their taste buds, that would be very interesting. And I hope, like, and it's a skill that you can easily pick up. And the thing is also, mind you, like I said, this is just standard coffee, but when you have it, I feel like it's a very enriching experience that people really would pay pretty good money to have um, such an experience and you know like we could easily have our own roasteries and so um, I recently learned this is direct trade coffee from Nicaragua so George Howell says that it's even better for the people because they're incentivized to make good decisions regarding the coffee and their longevity and the sustainability of the farm. Okay, so we're at the 50, oak, oak 50. Okay, let me go here. Okay, right, this will catch the colors better. I don't know, maybe I should have been doing this the whole time. But, um, we're on medium now, so we gotta stop just before 30, like 25, or 20. So we are trying to achieve what's called first crack. And you know, for consistency's sake, I'm just gonna slow down. So keep stirring this and lower it. And meanwhile here, look, they're still green. Like, they're not even responding, but I feel like... Just getting the temperature up should get them ready by the time I have this thing ready. And the thing about coffee beans is roasting this way, right? Is especially if you're, I don't know how to deal with an all clad, but if you're doing cast iron, first thing is they absorb any oil that you kind of got sticking around. So make sure you have a neutral oil kind of going on your cast iron or like whatever you wash. But the other thing is though, they will scrape because it's really the nature of this thing. It's like a wooden husk hull kind of thing that we're grinding. And, okay, now we're at the 15 mark. We're going to put it on medium. And brew on high for 30 seconds. Or just brew it on high. So, again, you want to keep it moving because we don't have the river bed. We don't have the fluid river, fluid bed roaster. And so, we have to keep this thing moving. And only do 50 grams at a time. And I really figured out that 50 grams is just enough that like you only have the occasional thing spark. And yet you can keep spinning it fast enough. Because there's another thing, right? So I found that actually the best thing for roasting in terms of time and quality and consistency is... One second, what's this timer doing? See how they're all getting nice and chocolatey like at the same time? So the best thing for to get all this consistent is actually um, a small pan. So I started out doing it in large, large pans for cast iron because I do love the cast iron. But it was so uneven. Man, this is cracked. It's so funny. I'm going to keep this roasting. I'm going to stop talking. So it was so uneven that like I had to actually... Um... See, now I have a... I have a moral dilemma here so but it was so uneven that i had to 
stop using the large cast iron pans. And I had, I didn't have the seven inch one. See how nice and even they look. And so like there's always going to be some stragglers. And I guess some people at this point, they would just take the medium ones and then toss out the unmedium ones. But I don't know, like I don't like to waste any. So I go actually kind of for a darker roast if I can. And um, keep in mind this also. Keep this spinning. And I kind of go for a darker roast because I don't want to waste any coffee, right? Like you wasted, you spent good money. And so for anyone to like just, I even saw George Howell do it because when you put it in the grinder, it was just to clean out the grinder. He says, well, it'll go bad real quick. And it's like, I understand, you know, when you run a business, you got to be professional. But on my end, I don't want to waste any coffee. It came from a plant, like a farmer worked hard on it. It was transported thousands of miles for me. I feel like we should revere coffee. Maybe we should call it revere coffee. Um, revere theology. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess maybe that'll be the, uh, the motto. Revere coffee. Um, cast iron coffee. Cast iron theology. Revere coffee. So... My thing is, coffee is infinitely complex. There is micro lots and regions and like single farmer, single origin, blends, you know, dark roast, super dark roast. Some people like just need it burnt, basically. And all right, this is on the Mark 30. And so because of that, there's so much out there of people who are willing to pay to find the perfect barista. And there has to be a community. First, like, get people... The more you roast, and the more you create a community around roasting, you're creating a community around, like, the sharing the drink. And then, I was watching, like, a coffee tournament, and the, 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 winning, the winner said, like, coffee is about sharing. So, first you have sharing the drink, but then on the other hand, you have also someone who can manage the infinite complexities of the drink. From how it's farmed to how it's real. I saw another winning barista. Um, he was Swedish. He pointed out he does the April roasting shows. It's a bunch of tattoos on his arm. And so he was pointing out that he met the farmer who grew it. And the farmer like made sure that it was fermented in like the perfect place and the perfect um, canister boiler or whatever. And so, um, there's all kinds of, like, there's relationships along the whole chain, right? I mean, let's forget about the exploitation. We're not talking about that right now. We're trying to enjoy two roasts, three roasts, or, like, a week's worth of roasts of coffee. But that's not as bad as other things, like cocaine and Nike sneakers, I would imagine. So, oh, yeah, this is definitely starting to crack a little bit more. See how they're all getting even, but like there's still some troubling yellow ones. And so the way I deal with that is like I just bring it up to a nice dark roast. All right, we're at the, not the 25, but the 20 mark. So, again, you just want to do this for 30 seconds on medium or high. And like actually the majority of them are kind of done. If I was light roasted and had any sense, I would kind of pull them out. And just throw out the ones that are stragglers. But my thing is, why don't you bring the stragglers up to a full cook? And then kind of just tells you what the rest of the row should be like. You know, it's like a steak. Not that a steak should be well done. A steak should be close to rare, but like medium if you don't want rare. So it's like you want something that's been tender just the right time and so coffee is that same idea and when you hear that crack you can just be so happy because that just means I'm doing my job and you got to watch out something crack violently it's uh, I think we're more than a minute now into this my hands are used to this too before they used to scorch and I'd have to wear a glove or wrap it around a towel or something 
I think my hands are just too sweat. I don't know, maybe just using low heat, lower heat today or the wind or something. So again, this is we're probably going on longer than I needed to. And so we're getting into the zone where like maybe everything's gonna be too dark. And you don't wanna burn it if we burn it, that's embarrassing, right? I'm talking about you know redistributing wealth and empowering communities of poor blacks and poor whites and poor immigrants and just if we can just share a coffee culture we can somehow have like made a plant solve many if not all of our problems um and then we can get around to compensating the farmers who like grow it but like i said cocaine is more exploitative than that um there's a lot of things we should quit, like alcohol is probably damaging in like a more severe way. I don't even have this on high. So sometimes like you'll surprise yourself because you're like, I don't even have this on high and like it might burn. So again, we're at a very sensitive point, right? Like if I get too distracted, if I start picking seeds up off the ground, then like I am going to wind up burning the whole batch. So... The question is really, do we do one more cycle or do you do two more cycles of 30 second rows? And so I'm only inclined to do one more, but maybe I just want to see or just get the right chemicals out. And also be ready to Oh yeah, make sure like you want to push the light ones to the center because the center is where all the bury them, you know, if you can. And again, don't forget about your other thing because if you ever leave it in one place, then it's kind of like not conducive. Are you past the thirty? I think we're past the thirty. Again, you don't want to. You, you got cracks. Like basically, look, this is done. Like, people will say this is done. Here, I'll turn off the light, too. People might say this is, like, totally done. Like, what are you doing? But, man, yeah, this actually does look better in some way. But I would disagree. I would think that, like I said, you don't, I don't, I don't think, I let the stragglers guide me, and then I let the whole roast tell me that it's done. I don't just, I don't know. Again, it's, it's, it's maybe out of cheapness, but it's also kind of, like, out of respect for the coffee, where you just want to get to a crack. If one fell on the ground and it was like medium, we'll be all right. Honestly, if I had someone else helping me, maybe we could start grabbing them out of there. But the way I'm, I'm spinning it, there's really no time to like start grabbing the good ones. Like only I could do it, and I'm not even watching the clock at this point, which is not good. But we're waiting. We're waiting for them all to crack, basically. And yet, on another level, they're all done. Like, you would just throw one or two out at this point. But, you count like three or four, maybe five or six, seven, eight. You just want to roast it. It hardly Do some overboard. Let me lower it. Because again, it's very easy to just start. Like then you got something so charred you don't even know what to do with it. So you don't want to be that guy. Who's like. Wasted 50 grams of beans. That's not honoring the bean. I think we're good. Because look, most of it's oily. There's still some that annoying straggler there. I feel like picking up. There's one that fell. Yeah, put that back. Okay, so now it's on low.
definitely scorching. Should I wait? Did I spill more? How did that one not roast? Oops, sorry. How did that one not roast? I guess I could take a spoon and start evacuating some. Because they are mostly done. I've never done this before, by the way. I'm just sifting and making sure none of them are too light. Dark enough to eat. Not that. Oh, hi, that other spoon. Um, let's see how not organized we are. Oh, and then, more or less, um, I hate to have to take out another spoon. But I really should have been doing this. See, like at this point, it's only two that has to remain in here. Like, maybe three if you want to count. Like, ridiculously. Two is fine. It's only this one. Alright, then you take out. Fifty grams. Or just enough to stir. We have to estimate. All right, seeing some yellow here, some yellow there. We're gonna try to do. We're gonna reset this timer. And we have to also keep mindful we're coming from a hot plate, so we're probably gonna have faster results. Now we have ample opportunity to heat up. 
these things. But yeah, I think that's it. Have a good day, guys.